sounding fluent. Hello everybody, I'm Sixit Petchinalud and welcome to another episode of Sounding Fluent. Let's start with today's RMUTP news. On April the 20th, Assistant Professor Atakan Satya Panit, a lecturer at the Department of Creative Media Technology, RMUTP's Faculty of Mass Communication Technology, appeared on Channel 10's Thai Parliament channel, sharing his views and thoughts on how today's journalists report and distribute their work, the evolution of mass communication mediums, how social media influences elections, how journalists can keep themselves safe and secure online during the election season, the importance of ethics in journalism, and the spread of mis- and disinformation and its consequences. In this week's episode of Sounding Fluent, I have to thank NewYorkTimes.com and VeryWellMind.com. This week's focus is on how to maintain friendships and signs you're an introvert. Let's first talk about how to maintain friendships. Age and time have a funny relationship. Sure, they both move in the same direction. But the older we get, the more inverse that relationship can feel. And as work and family commitments take up a drastically outsized portion of that time, it is the treasured friendships in our life that often fade. A recent study found that the maximum number of social connections for both men and women occurs around the age of 25. But as young adults settle into careers and prioritize romantic relationships, those social circles rapidly shrink and friendships tend to take a back seat. The impact of that loss can be both social and physiological as research shows that bonds of friendship are critical to maintaining both physical and emotional health. Not only do strong social ties boost the immune system and increase longevity, but they also decrease the risk of contracting certain chronic illnesses and increase the ability to deal with chronic pain. According to the Journal of Health and Social Behavior, in terms of mortality, loneliness is a killer. We don't have to go out and spend every minute of every day with a rotating cast of friends. It is about feeling like you are supported in the ways that you want to be supported and believing that the connections you do have are nourishing and strong. According to a study by the American Association of Retired Persons, an estimated 42.6 million Americans over the age of 45 suffer from chronic loneliness, which significantly raises their risk for premature death. One researcher called the loneliness epidemic a greater health threat than obesity. Most people aren't aware that friendships are so beneficial. They think of it as a luxury rather than the fact that it can actually add years to their life. The good news is that keeping cherished friendships afloat doesn't need to be a huge time commitment. There are several things you can do to keep a bond strong, even when your to-do list is a mile long. Communicate expectations. A therapist and friendship researcher suggests being clear about your limits when you're feeling frenzied. If there are certain days or weeks where you're going to be less available, giving your friend a heads up can go a long way toward minimizing misunderstandings or conflicts where somebody feels left out or like they're being ignored. Tell your friends how long you expect to be off the radar how to communicate with you best during this time, and when your schedule is expected to go back to normal. Next, quote-unquote, I'm too busy. You might be booked from dusk until dawn, but without giving your friend context, that phrase, quote-unquote, I'm too busy, can feel like a blow-off. When we hear somebody say, I'm too busy, we don't actually know if that is true for just their lives at this time, or if that is their way of not really valuing us or wanting to spend time with us. Therefore, the friendship often just dies, not from lack of anything wrong or anybody even necessarily wanting it to die, but just simply chaotic lives and a lot of distance gets put in there. Instead of offering vague, blanket statements about your bustling schedule, qualify your busyness. You may say, I'm busy for the rest of the month or I'm tied up until the end of the year. Then make a counteroffer. If you can't meet face-to-face anytime soon, suggest a phone date 
Skype session or other way to connect so your friend doesn't feel abandoned. Then examine your busyness. If you find yourself telling long-time pals you're too snowed under to connect, it's time to look at how you truly spend your time. If you can find the time to binge-watch TV shows or check Facebook a million times a day, you can make time for your friends. When you feel like you can't squeeze in a book club or brunch or happy hour, pedicures or whatever it is, maybe assess a little bit more. Like, okay, well, how am I spending my time? And might there be a window in some of that time that actually allows for a real phone call or a walk around the block at lunch with one of my coworkers that I really like or whatever it might be? An author credits tracking her time for helping her banish her I'm too busy mindset. In making detailed notes on how she allotted her energy for a year, she found that the stories she told herself about where her time went weren't always true. She suggests using an Excel spreadsheet with half-hour increments to track the day. Once a clearer picture emerges of how one chooses to spend their time, it becomes possible to make positive, thoughtful changes. Personal, small gestures are the way to go. Tailored, thoughtful text messages are a low-effort way to keep up connections when you're short on time. The key is to share a little bit of information about your day that your friend couldn't glean from your Instagram feed or Snapchat story. You'd better make messages as personal as possible to show somebody that you're thinking about them. So, remembering obviously big life events, things like birthdays are a given, but also maybe smaller things like they had a doctor's appointment coming up or you know they were going to have a stressful day at work and kind of checking in to see how it went. Even a quick text message can go a long way. Ask questions that invite reveals, like, how was your vacation? How's your new job going? And avoid statements like, I hope you're having a great day or you're in my thoughts, which don't tend to prompt meaningful back and forth exchanges. Cultivate routines. Having a regular hang with your closest confidence can take the guesswork out of scheduling quality time. It might sound like you're not aiming very high if you're only gonna see certain friends once a year. But if you have an annual barbecue or a Memorial Day party or something, where it's kinda a guarantee you'll see certain friends, that is actually much better than kinda living it up to two people haggling over schedules. Another idea is multitask to combine your errands with some valuable BFF FaceTime. Ask a friend to come to your favorite spin class join your book club or accompany you to a volunteer gig. The more things you can do together, potentially the more often you'll be able to see each other. These repeated interactions are so important for keeping a friendship going. Come through when it counts. Another way to cement long-standing friendships when things are hectic is to go out of your way to attend any milestone events. Fly in for the baby shower attend a 40th birthday party, make an appearance at the retirement party, just show up. There aren't too many chances to make an impact in someone's life. But if you move mountains and carve out time for your friend's event, it'll sustain a friendship for a long time. Once in a while, do a big gesture to those friends who you really, really care about. And then that will kind of power the friendship for a while, even if you're too busy to see each other. Being that person who comes through will make that person feel loved and taken care of, even if you're not in constant contact. You must be aware of the three areas to measure and evaluate a functional friendship. The first area is positivity. Laughter, affirmation, gratitude, and any acts of service. The second is consistency or having interactions on a continual basis, which makes people feel safe and close to each other. The third is vulnerability, which is the revealing and the sharing of our lives. Any relationship that doesn't have those three things isn't a healthy friendship. If you're noticing a cooling with a friend, usually one of these areas needs special consideration. Knowing what makes a friendship tick is important because it allows us to be more effective, especially when time is in short supply. Obviously, we wouldn't want a friendship to live on text messages, 
but it can certainly survive hectic times if we know where to put our energy. Acknowledge efforts made. While the energy expended to keep contact going may not always be equal, it is important to be mindful of the attempts your friends make to connect. Reach out to nip resentment in the bud. If one person is consistently or chronically putting in more effort, issues can come up. Let your friend know that it means so much to you that they're checking in so often and that you really appreciate it. Pipe up if the balance feels off. If you want them to kind of tone it down a little bit because you're not able to respond all the time, you can say you feel really bad that you're not able to get back to them all the time. Addressing friends' bits for attention can mean the difference between having a dear friendship flourish or fade during a frantic time. Most people just want to know they're loved and thought of. If we can, like, give that validation and affirmation rather than just dismissing and saying we're too busy. If we can kind of combine those things, most people understand and will still feel loved during that time. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Now we come to eight signs you're an introvert. Introversion is a personality trait characterized by a focus on internal feelings rather than on external source of stimulation. Introverts and extroverts are often viewed in terms of two extreme opposites. But the truth is that most people lie somewhere in the middle. While introverts make up an estimated 25 to 40% of the population, there are still many misconceptions about this personality type. It is also important to note that 
being an introvert doesn't mean that you're socially anxious or shy. If you're not sure whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, taking an introvert versus extrovert test may help you get a better idea of which category suits your personality. What is an introvert? Introversion is one of the major personality traits identified in many theories of personality. The word introvert is used to describe someone who tends to turn inward, meaning they focus more on internal thoughts, feelings, and moods rather than seeking out external stimulation. Introverts tend to be more quiet, reserved, and introspective. Extroverts gain energy from social interaction, while introverts expend energy in social situations. After attending a party or spending time in a large group of people, Introverts often feel a need to recharge by spending time alone. Causes of introversion Are you born introverted or is it something you become over time? Introverts likely develop due to a combination of both nature and nurture. The way that your body's physiology responds to the outside environment plays a critical role in determining your level of extroversion and introversion. Each person has a basic set point in terms of arousal level. Some people tend to naturally have a much higher set point, while others have a much lower set point. These arousal levels could be thought of as a continuum. 15% of people have a minimal set point, meaning that they naturally have low arousal levels. 15% of people have a high set point, meaning they naturally tend to be more aroused. 70% of people lie somewhere in the middle of the continuum. Introverts have naturally high levels of arousal. Because of these high arousal levels, introverts tend to seek activities and environments where they can escape from overstimulation. Alone time gives them the opportunity to process and reflect on what they have learned. You may find yourself asking, am I an introvert? Or maybe you're wondering if someone in your life falls into this category. While you might think of an introvert as a shy wallflower who prefers to stay home alone instead of socializing, Introverts come in many types, with a wide variety of characteristics. The types include Social introverts This type of introvert prefers small versus large groups of people. They prefer a quiet night at home over a night out. Thinking introverts Introverts in this category tend to spend a lot of time thinking. They are introspective and creative. Anxious introverts Anxious introverts often feel unsettled or nervous around people during social interactions. Inhibited introverts This type of introvert tends to overthink, spending a significant amount of time considering a decision before doing anything. You might find that many introverts have a blend of qualities from among the four types. Many introverts also display qualities that you wouldn't think are typical to their personality type. For instance, there are plenty of introverts who enjoy socializing. You might even be surprised to learn that many people who you think of as social butterflies might actually be quite introverted. The following are just a few of the signs that you or someone you know might be an introvert. Being around lots of people drains your energy. Do you ever feel exhausted after spending time with a lot of people? After a day interacting with others, do you often need to retreat to a quiet place and have an extended amount of time to yourself? One of the major characteristics of this personality type is that introverts have to expend energy in social situations, unlike extroverts who gain energy from such interactions. That doesn't mean that introverts avoid social interactions altogether. Many introverts actually enjoy spending time around others, but they tend to prefer the company of close friends. You enjoy solitude. As an introvert, your idea of a good time is a quiet afternoon to yourself to enjoy your hobbies and interests. Activities like time alone with a good book, a peaceful nature walk, or watching your favorite television program help you feel recharged and energized. This doesn't mean that introverts want to be alone all the time. Many introverts love spending time with friends and interacting with familiar people in social situations. The key thing to remember is that after a long day of social activity, an introvert will probably want to retreat to a quiet place to think, reflect, and recharge. If having a few hours to be alone sounds like your idea of a good time, you just might be an introvert. 
you have a small group of close friends. One common misconception about introverts is that they don't like people. While introverts typically do not enjoy a great deal of socializing, they do enjoy having a small group of friends to whom they are particularly close. Instead of having a large social circle of people they know only on a superficial level, introverts prefer to stick to deep, long-lasting relationships marked by a great deal of closeness and intimacy. Researchers have found that people high in this trait tend to have a smaller group of friends. Of the many strengths of introverts, one is that they tend to create profound and significant relationships with those closest to them. They also prefer to interact with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis rather than in a large group setting. If your social circle tends to be small but very close, there's a pretty good chance that you are an introvert. People may find it difficult to get to know you. Introverts are often described as quiet, reserved, and mellow, and are sometimes mistaken for being shy. While some introverts certainly are shy, people should not mistake an introvert's reserve for timidity. In many cases, people with this personality type simply prefer to choose their words carefully and not waste time or energy on needless chit-chat. If you are the quiet type and a bit reserved, you probably are an introvert. For more signs to come on next week's episode of Sounding Fluent, I'm Sexy Pachin Alert, and as always, see you next week. Peace. Sounding Fluent. <laughs>